What's up, guys? Welcome back to HRT. I uh, hope you had a good week. We are back. Uh, today, I have a special guest. His name is Bear. Hi, Bear. Hi. <laughs> uh, dude, I think you may have the sickest name, like, ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's a fun one, for sure. I've only met one other person named Bear, and they're also trans, so... Really? <laughs> yeah, so it may be a thing. <laughs> That's funny, though. I love that. How did you... Can I ask you how... Because your full name is Barrett, right? Mm-hmm. Can I ask you how you chose the name Barrett and went to Bear? Okay. In seventh grade, we had, I went to a Catholic school like my whole life. We went on this retreat and the older guys from the high school came and like facilitated the retreat. And there was this one guy and he was probably the most attractive man I've ever seen. And his name was Bear. And I was like, I've only seen that in a dog before. I thought My it was dog's the coolest name is thing Bear. ever. <laughs> is it? I do have a dog named Bear. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But I, I was like, oh, I think I remember a guy named that. Uh, I'll take that. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> no, that's awesome. It gives, like, I think I told you this yesterday, it gives, like, cool, edgy, charming guy vibes. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely fitting for my personality, for sure. It is. The, your vibes that you give, definitely yeah. giving bear vibes. I like it. Um, where do you live again? In Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, bro. Mm -hmm. Wow. And my last guest, Tyler, he lives in Florida. What's with all these trans guys living in very oh, different states? Poor thing. <laughs> you know, anyone living in Florida, power to them. Yeah. Good Lord. No. <laughs> Texas isn't, I guess it's a little better than Florida, but I yeah, feel like it's still a little. A bit. How is it living there while being trans? <laughs> It's okay. It's a, I live I live in like a blue city, so in okay. the city it's not terrible. But amongst like any kind of stranger, it's not very nice because most of the general public is not super cool with me. And right. so and it's more just like despite the support that I can get in my city, I still hear my state government being like screw you yeah. so i'm like how good is it here really <laughs> would you want to live anywhere else or, or do you like texas i want to live somewhere else before i come back here my girlfriend and i want to go someplace else but that's cool nice uh, yeah i didn't know dallas was was blue i thought to just all of texas to was an extent. republican <laughs> yeah to an extent like austin is very very liberal but then dallas is more like young money mm -hmm. they're like socially liberal fiscally conservative <laughs> type of people like the worst yeah. wow. but, would you when did you come out as trans if you don't mind me asking i was 20 years old i was and a I, sophomore in high uh, sophomore college sophomore in college how old are you now i'm 24 24 slay i didn't mm -hmm. even know that i didn't yeah. even ask your age <laughs> Yeah, I just, did, just had four years on T in July. Wow, okay. So you came out your sophomore year of college, and how mm -hmm. long after that? You started, you came out when you were 20, did you say? I came out when I was 20, yeah. And then, like, two months after I came out, I started T. And then, like, five months after that, I got top surgery. Like, I just ran through it. Dude, hell yeah. As you should, but I, was I also, think. I was home for the semester. Because I mm -hmm. took the semester off, kind of just like to focus on myself you. to do it, and yeah. there was I wasn't going to be able to get surgery before I got back to school. And then my mom was like, "I'm so sorry, I'm not letting like you're not going back to school without this. I'm not mm -hmm. making you do that." And so, oh wow, that's yeah, nice. It was very. She's my family is very nice. Really? Wow. So yeah. was your coming out process to your family like it was pretty easy? Nobody gave they you a hard of, time? Yeah, they kind of already knew it was coming mm -hmm. because, I mean, if you knew me as a child, you'd think I was a boy. And I'd spent my, like, 
entire life trying to convince people that I was a girl <laughs> when I was growing up. And then I'm spending the rest of my life trying to convince people that I'm not. So I'm like, well, this is a little bit crazy. I kind of relate to that because I was always, you know, the tomboy growing up. Yeah. And like, I have this memory of like going to like Adventureland or like some amusement park or whatever. And I had long hair, like mm -hmm. past my shoulders and I was g getting ready to get on a, like a, a ride or a slide or something. And this guy was like, I'm loving the hair, little dude. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but oh it was God. like weirdly affirming, but I didn't know what like right? affirming was then. <laughs> I know I was, there was a specific one where I was at the YMCA swimming pool and I was wearing like Pirates of the Caribbean swim trunks and a swim shirt. And oh, I jumped yeah. in and I think I did a flip off the diving board and some lady was like, your son's really athletic. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> did like, do you remember feeling like a part of you liked that? Or did it like make you nervous? Yeah. I was a I little bit that. more nervous because I was like, what is that? What do you mean? <laughs> I had never even thought about it before. And so that's right. the first time kind of that I was like, what's... I was like, what is this gender thing? I don't really like this. <laughs> no, I get that. Do you have like a memory from like before you even came out as trans, before you even knew you were trans that you like felt something was off or like did you not know until you knew? From like three years old, I pretty much – I knew something was off. I didn't know it was gender because I didn't know what gender really was. <laughs> but even in – like what stands out the most is when I was growing up when I would talk to myself in my head, I would be like, my name is Carter. I am a professional skateboarder. <laughs> I'm like, and all this like guy stuff. And yeah. then That's I realized awesome. what I was saying. And I was like, oh, this is a quite a, a little bit concerning. <laughs> and so I, I like switched to a new doctor at that point. And I remember filling out the paperwork and my mom checked out a box that said like gender identity issues and i was like seven at this point and i remember literally losing my absolute mind and i was like what the fuck are you talking about no i don't she's like i thought that you wanted to be a boy and i'm like ah! <laughs> that's kind of where it where wait it so started. this was when you were seven years old mm -hmm. your mom was like uh Honey, I think you're having yeah. some gender identity issues. Yeah. And I was wow. like, I am absolutely not. Don't even <laughs> say anything like that to my doctor. I'll kill you. That's so funny. Wait, so like, what if, do you think that if you were like, yeah, I am experiencing gender identity issues when Bro. you were that young, do you think the doctor would have helped you and like my, started your yeah. transition? Or do you think they would have like sent you to some conversion therapy type shit? The doctor that I was switching to would have helped me, I think, which is kind of wild to me because I'm like, what if I had said yes? How much yeah. time would that have saved for me or what would that have done for me? But I don't know. And you said you came out. Well, did you come out to like – how long did you know you were trans before you came out? Like how long were you <laughs> okay. in the <laughs> Okay. This process was a little bit long. I knew <laughs> – I, okay, I started watching YouTube videos of trans guys, which is always like the first step. Mm -hmm. And I was way too interested in them at like, I think I was 13. And whenever the show I Am Jazz came out, I was super into that of like Jazz Jennings transitioning. And she was transitioning from male to female. And I thought mm -hmm. that was the only way you could do it. Like I'd never seen a trans guy before. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that was a thing. That's how most people think now. Right. So, and so I thought yeah. the only way that you could do it is from male to female. And mm -hmm. so when I saw these videos on YouTube, I was like, oh, my God, you could do it the other way around. <laughs> and, but kind of put an inkling in my mind that was like, shit, I'm going to have to eventually do this. Like, yeah. this is clicking too much. Mm -hmm. And so then there was a, a couple. 13 was when I graduated like eighth grade and went to high school into mm -hmm. an all-girls Catholic high school. Oh, so damn. I, this is while I'm realizing this, and I'm like, well, if I come out, I'm going to get kicked out of my school, and wow. I don't want to go to any of the other schools. Like, mm -hmm. I, should I give up my high school experience for my transition? And so then 
I was like, no, I'm just going to put it off. And Wow. So you I knew, you're saying you knew at 13 mm-hmm. that you were trans yeah. and had, was kind of forced to put it off until you were older because you went to an all girl school. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah. It put it on hold for four years. And then I think senior year, I, there was another all girls school um, that was a little more liberal because it wasn't Catholic. And I didn't realize there were so many trans people there. And like they had uniform pants that they could wear that were like, we had to wear a skirt every day, which is another layer of shit on top of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that school apparently like had pants in the same print as their skirt. I'm oh, like, wow. oh, damn. Okay. That the other school was an all girl school that was just mm-hmm. like more got you. Yeah. Interesting. Did going, how, like, were you okay during those four years? Or. <laughs> I kind of like pushed it so far back that I kind of was into the like whole sisterhood aspect of it. Cause mm. sisterhood was like a huge thing at my school. And that mm. was, I don't know. I kind of got so enthralled with that. And it right. was so uncomfortable though, because any of the activities that I would do, I would feel so out of place doing them. Mm-hmm. But then I'd be like, oh, but friends, I have all these friends, right. all these people. But yeah, it was and then not enjoyable. You graduated high school. And then what were you like? OK, finally, I get to be myself. I graduated high school. I went to college my first semester. Um, I was recruited to play softball at a school in um, in Chicago. And I went and got injured. And so then while I was there, though, it was super, super different from Texas being like all these trans flags over the all the city in Chicago. And I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, cool. And I'd been watching um, so many videos that I knew like there were sort of like trans stores in Chicago. And I went to one of them. Um, I think it was called Out of Bed. And it was like a sex shop kind of, but they sold prosthetics and binders and stuff. And I bought mm-hmm. a packer and a binder with one of Sorry. my friends. And she was like, Oh, cool. <laughs> awesome. But So then when I finally went to, I transferred to my other college where my twin sister was and pretty much like once I got there, I was like, Oh crap, I'm going to mm-hmm. have to do this now. And I came out like six months after I got there. Did you say you bought a binder and packer and stuff before you came out? Mm-hmm. Like before you cut your hair off and like. Before... I had cut my I had cut my hair off at that point because okay. I was presenting as like a super masculine lesbian. Got you. And so I cut my hair like right after I graduated and like when I went to college, but then like the first three weeks I cut it, and so I was looking mm-hmm. a little male, but then. <laughs> Yeah, I was <laughs> – that's kind of crazy now I'm thinking about that. <laughs> but, yeah. Half playing the part, getting ready to play the part. <laughs> getting getting prepared to play the yeah. part. Wow. Collecting and the then, costume. <laughs> so you came out, you said, six months after you graduated. Mm-hmm. Did I get that right? Yeah. Right. And then – so you came out in college, right? Mm-hmm. You said you took a year off, though. Yeah. Well, I also took a year off because do you remember when like vapes were killing people? Mm-hmm. So um, I was a, a little dumbass and was smoking some black market carts and the ones in Dallas were fine. I get to Alabama, smoke the first one, dookie water. Like I'm <laughs> so sick. I have the flu essentially. No. I go into the ER because I haven't been able to eat in four days and I'm throwing up. Oh, and they're shit. like, hey, King, you have vitamin E acetate poisoning in your lungs and <gasps> some chemical burns. You need to go to the hospital. And I'm like, fuck. Oh my God. And I'm like struggling in there. I'm in the ICU <gasps> for nine for nine days. Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. Holy shit. And then I finally am like, okay to leave. And the doctors were like, no, you can't leave. And I was in Alabama. The medical service there, they don't like trans people at all. 
So they oh, were God. literally being so mean to me. No. And my mom was like, my mom was like, we're fucking out of here. Period. And so then she like packed up my entire college dorm room while I was in the ICU. And luckily, like two of two of my uh, neighbors were like, what are you doing? And this, she said bears in the ICU and they helped her pack up my whole room, which wow. was so nice. And then yeah. we hopped in the car and drove back to Dallas and we were like, we're done. Wow. So, yeah. so that's, I was, oh forced my God. To, I was forced to take a semester off. And this was when I was two, two months on testosterone. And so, Oh, so you were already on testosterone when you were in the yeah. hospital. Yeah, if you can remember your first two months of tea and kind of the mood swings that were happening oh my at God. that point, I was a monster. Dude, and, and so, you were like dying. Exactly. <laughs> and so then I got back home and was like, okay, I got to take care of myself. Anytime I see someone smoking a car, I'm like, you're going to die. You're going to die. <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to die. Put that down. Now those things, those things are bad for you. Yeah, I, I've been around uh, people who have uh, a cough from that shit, and just not good, not good. Mm -hmm. Aren't those? I don't know by about near you, but I think those are illegal, like very illegal here, where you can mm -hmm. get in trouble for carrying those more than you can get in trouble for like carrying a bag of weed. What state were you in? Oh. I'm in New York. Is weed illegal there? I don't even know. I think, Max, do you know? I think it's decriminalized now. It's decriminalized uh, now. Yeah, that's that's another thing I really didn't think of. I was traveling all over. I was driving back from Texas to Alabama with carts in my car. And <laughs> then I finally figure out, I'm like, oh, the oil is like yeah. 10 times worse mm -hmm. and a, a felony. I'm yeah. Like, nice. Yep. I didn't know those were a felony for a while. They yeah. Like What'd you say, Max? They classify oil like heroin. They classify mm -hmm. oil like heroin. Oh yeah. Top top narcotic, baby. It's ridiculous. Jesus. See, I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. I did Good I did you. vape for a long time. You quit? Uh, wow. I quit. Yeah. That's still amazing. one of the hardest things I ever did, but I did right. it. <laughs> yeah. Still sometimes I think I'm a little over a year without nicotine now. And still sometimes, like last night, I, I had a bad craving for the first time in a while. Really? Yeah. It happens, Man. but it goes away fast. That's good. Yeah, I had a wheeze and I couldn't like do any exercise without being like, <gasps> so I had to yeah. stop. <laughs> you get like a burning sensation in your heart and you're like, oh, yeah. sick. Like, oh, cool. I'm dying. Nice. <laughs> and like me being me, I I'm never like... This is concerning. I should go to the ER. I'm I'm always like, well, I'll be fine. <laughs> that's that's why I had like that's why it got so bad for me is because I was like, I'm not going to the ER. I'll be fine. I'll be cool. <laughs> and I went to some urgent care and they were like, you have a UTI. And I was like, mm. do I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, bro. Those, those shits hurt too. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad it was untrue. But also what you went through sounds a little worse. <laughs> a little bit. I would have would have taken the UTI at that point. I feel like, yeah. I feel like the UTI would have been a little better. <laughs> um, anyways, I wanted to talk to you about uh, – wait, when did you start T? 20 years old. 20 and you're 24 now. Mm, nice. Yep. Do you uh, – you do injections? I do. I do uh, sub Q injections. Sub Q. Uh, Everybody sub Q. Yeah. I don't think I've had somebody on that that's intramuscular yet. I'm afraid of sticking a needle in my muscle. That's kind of intense for me. Wow. Do you do it in the butt cheeks or do you do it in the stomach? I do it. I do it in my cheeks, baby. Yeah. <laughs> do it in my cheeks. I do it in my cheeks, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. So. Um, okay. So sub Q. Do you know your dose? 0.3 milliliters Oops. once a week. Once a week. Nice. I yeah. do 75 milligrams. Damn. <laughs> no, actually, I do 100 oh, milligrams. milligrams. I milligrams. don't know the difference between the points and the milligrams. And shit. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Mine's 200 milligram per milliliter, I think. Two. Oh, my God. That could be a lie. I don't no. get math. I don't know how to do yeah, math. I don't know. Um, but... 
yeah, I'm on 100 milligrams every two weeks. Mm-hmm. So I like to know everybody's dose. Plus, oh, I feel like if there's weeks, that's cool. I like to ask uh, the guys that I have on here what their doses and everything, because hopefully mm-hmm. you know there's a trans guy watching and can start to understand the doses right. and how it works and stuff. Um, but yeah, sub Q. I you know I've said this before, but um, when I started testosterone, my I was going to an endocrinologist back then, mm-hmm. and they didn't know what sub Q was. Pardon me. Yeah, they didn't. They only heard of intramuscular, and I had questions about sub Q, but I didn't know what sub Q was because I saw like on on YouTube or TikTok or whatever that people were injecting through their stomach, which you mm-hmm. can do with sub Q, right? Yeah. And I was like, I see people online injecting themselves through their stomach, and they were like, mm-hmm. we don't know what that is. They must not be taking testosterone. Don't never do that. Never inject it. Which, like, yes, never inject intramuscular testosterone through your stomach. Yeah. But like, right? But yeah, they had no idea. That's crazy. I know. It just goes to show medical professionals. Mm-hmm. It's whack as hell. Um, what did you? notice emotional wise physical wise what did you notice first or what was like your favorite change that testosterone what i noticed i noticed first my pee smelled so bad (laughs) that was something i didn't think was gonna happen and that was the first thing i noticed is my pee smelled different and i was like kind of like oh okay that, that's so funny it was that and bottom growth that happened first and i gotcha. was like oh my god <laughs> what is happening i'm horrified <laughs> and i was really nervous about that going in mm-hmm. but then as it happened i was like oh never mind right. yeah <laughs> but <laughs> now it's normal <laughs> right but it was those two first and then hot flashes were really bad and i'm still having temperature issues but mm-hmm. Yeah, those happened hard. first. My favorite, my favorite's probably my voice because I really yeah. was always wanting that. And that mm-hmm. was kind of the thing that I thought was going to save me from getting clocked. Yeah. Was if I opened my mouth and said something in a deep voice. Mm-hmm. That was, I think, the one thing for me that gave me the most dysphoria was my voice for a while. Yeah, definitely. I had a very high pitched voice. Like, did, were you one of the guys who, because I did. I had one of these, but did you do the voice video? This yeah. is my voice. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 sh- I wish I had taken more videos and pictures, but I cringed myself out whenever I was doing them. So I like kept up with them for a little bit, but I have like patches where I don't have any weeks or any mm-hmm. months. Cause I was like way too cringe to, yeah. to upload it. It wasn't easy doing no. that. This is my voice. <laughs> this is my voice. And then, like, all of TikTok started making fun of all trans guys everywhere, being like, this is my voice. I but know. just cis people doing it. Fucking assholes. I, <laughs> was, I know. I had seen one that was like, this is my week. This is my voice on WWE yeah. for two weeks. And I'm like, okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> like, it's funny, but stop. <laughs> like, I laughed, but not not you making that joke. Yeah, it uh, Do you... I like to also ask uh, trans guys this too. Um, how do you feel about shot day? Do you like taking your shot or do you fucking hate it? I used to really like it. I used to have my whole routine and I was like, ooh. Have it. <laughs> and I used to even like put it on Snapchat sometimes of like just record a video of me doing That's it. Cool. Being like, did did my shot day? <laughs> Which was, people liked that because they didn't even know that I was. Mm-hmm. They knew I was taking testosterone. They didn't know what that meant in actuality and didn't right. really know in practice what it was going to look like. But now I'm kind of annoyed with it because I'm like, damn, I'm going to have to do this for the rest of my life. And sometimes I'm like, I wake up on a Tuesday and I'm like, I really don't want to put a needle in my body right now. No. But I have to or else I'm going to feel terrible all day. Yep. That's how I feel about it too. I I never enjoyed shot day, to be honest. I mm-hmm. It's not like... It's not like I hate taking t- testosterone. It's just like well, what you said, like having to stick a needle in myself every two weeks or whatever, mm-hmm. not fun. Gives me anxiety. Yeah. Do you have yeah. like a routine or do you just – I I'll, The only kind of routine that I have is that I'll set it up the night before and like pull the night before and just have it ready. And then – so I just wake up in the morning and literally I'm just like doop, doop, 
bunk. Oh, in the mor- morning shots. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. I noticed that it started getting easier for me when I, because I do it after my shower. So before mm-hmm. my shower, I'll draw it all, I'll draw it all up and everything, yeah. and then I'll place it somewhere. And then when I get out of the shower, it like breaks it up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I'm yeah. like, oh, it takes me like 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I don't no, want to do that. And then like by breaking it up, it makes it seem a little, a little better. Yeah. Do you listen to music while you take your shot or no? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'm just like, it's so, it's so much of a chore at this point rather than like yeah. something that's affirming. And mm-hmm. so it's kind of just like the same as brushing my teeth at this point. And so yeah. it's. I like I'll the have, idea of doing it in the morning. Sorry. Yeah. I just, I'll like, I like that. If I notice that if I don't do it in the morning, this may just be because I have always done it in the morning. And so my body's just used to it. But if I miss it and like have to do it after work, the entire work day, I'm like, my mental health is so shit. My energy is so low. And I'm like, my intrusive thoughts are like, <laughs> ready to take me and <laughs> ready so, to take me so you mm-hmm. notice it you notice a change if you don't if you don't take it you're in your mood yeah i notice a huge difference and i actually was so concerned by it because one of the times it was so intense that i was like low-key having suicidal thoughts and i was like what the hell is going on this is not normal <laughs> what the and hell guys <laughs> what the heck guys do you guys want to like kill yourself too no <laughs> but i put out <laughs> I put out an Instagram like poll and because I have so many trans guys following me, I was like, okay, hey guys, do you want to like die too if you don't take a shot? And 80, I think it was like 87% said yes, that they experienced. And it was specifically about like those kinds of thoughts and everyone was like, yeah. Mm -hmm." And I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going crazy. Yeah. See, now I wonder... If that's like maybe because you take it every week with sub Q, because mm-hmm. like I don't know, I feel like I've maybe I'm just stupid, but like I don't really notice a big change in my mood if I miss my shot. I mean, if I like stop taking my shots altogether, like I know in like at least a month, like I'd be suicidal as fuck. But yeah. like one shot, I feel like I don't notice a change, and I don't know why. I th- I think it also could be because you do every two weeks and with every one week that's so much of a like intense jump and then intense yeah. drop right. and so like from i do it on tuesdays because tuesdays are for the boys and um <laughs> tuesdays i'm like Whoa! my energy and like my overall mood is just like shot up and then mm-hmm. i can tell by sunday i'm like really down low and on mm-hmm. monday i'm like holding it together by a string (laughs) and so i got when you stretch it out further and give yourself more of a streamline rather than wah yeah it could be and you know they tried to talk me out of injections when i want to start testosterone they tried to get me to do was it the patches or like the lotion or something the gel the gel thank you um like under the arms or some shit and i was like Mm -hmm. no i've seen nobody do that on youtube i want to be like everybody else i've seen no youtube videos about gel (laughs) yeah Yeah, and i I, go ahead you go i see a lot of guys now doing gel which is really something i didn't think was going to happen i'm seeing a lot of people on tiktok doing it but it's mostly because of like what i said of the huge jump of um because you do the, you do the gel every day, right? Every day. Yeah, I couldn't I do that. Could never. And then if I you have never. like a significant other, or like a girlfriend, they can't touch you for like. You can't touch them. Yeah, no. Then your girlfriend Until will turn into a man too. Then you'll have to be yeah. gay. <laughs> then she's hairy. <laughs> then you'll have a hairy ass girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny you know i didn't do the gel because i first of all i was young and ignorant and didn't mm-hmm. understand anything but i always thought that like i'd be more manly if i took the injections which is untrue it's not true but i th- just thought the injections would help me like pass more and pass faster you know what i mean that's that's something that i think i like still have some thoughts on of or maybe misunderstanding on of like in my mind the gel is like if you want to go super slow, you know, if you yeah. want to see the changes super slow and want to kind of gradually work into it and then shots are kind of like, boom. Yeah. You're man. 
But <laughs> that's kind of how I saw it. Yeah. No, I feel like what is there? There's injections. There's gel. Is there something else? There's a pellet as well. A pellet, like a pill. You, it's uh like a little. It looks like a little grain of rice, and they make an incision in your butt cheek and put it in there, and oh, then shit. You do a little bit, a little sew up. And you do it, I think, every three months or six months, and it kind of gradually releases the tea in like kind of a cis, more cis way. I don't. That doesn't make sense, but (laughs) I got you. I'm with you. Testosterone more cis. Yeah. (laughs) That's wow. I don't even think I knew that. Mm. Wow. How do you think that like? In comparison to injections and gel, do you think that fits somewhere in the middle, like? wanting to pass quicker or slower i think it's uh, a little bit higher in my mind there's like a hierarchy of like shots are on top but so in my mind it's like shots pellet gel but that makes sense i don't know they do the exact same thing so i'm yeah this could this is just my mind (laughs) um i wanted to also ask you about your top surgery you said you got top surgery right i did yeah uh, how long ago was that? Um, three and a half years. Wow, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, where'd you go? I went to um, in Dallas. Well, it was in Plano. It was the American Institution for Plastic Surgery, and um, I got it with a doctor named Alan Doolin, and Slay. the best results ever. Like, I don't know what he does, but. My scars faded really well, and he did it. He's he's just such a good surgeon that he, like, the stuff that he took out kind of, like, shaped my muscles as well to, like, create a tiny, like, look of a pec. Mm-hmm. And so when I got out of surgery, it kind of looked like I had, like, chest muscle mm-hmm. instead of, like, looking super concave. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to do drains either, which was something I was, like, really nervous about was drains and he said that because he does it so close to like the chest cavity or so i don't know what he said i wasn't trying to listen because it was nasty but he was like because he does it so close there's no area for fluid to build up and so but i don't know where that fluid went so (laughs) but i had a good recovery it was a it wasn't a terrible recovery at all um It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And you, you got double incision, right? I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Mm-hmm. I've never seen somebody get double incision and, incision and not have to do drains. So that's pretty dope. Yeah. I'm wow. like, I haven't heard of anyone else not doing drains. Wow. That's mm-hmm. fun. And you didn't have to travel far. It was in your city. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes up the road. 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm not complaining. I had to drive like an hour and a half. I'm in New York. Mm-hmm. I'm on Long Island. That's still and, a little bit, though. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just in the city. So mm-hmm. I only had to drive yeah, like sometimes, an hour and a half. Sometimes I'm up in Plano doing stuff and I'll like drive by and look and I'm like, my tits are chopped off right there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I always wonder what do they do with the What do they do with, with my the tits? left? <laughs> what do y'all do with that shit? I wish we could donate it. Dude. To trans women or something. That'd I think so there should be some sort of like gear exchange mm. with with trans women and men. Like, mm-hmm. I'll take that. You take <laughs> these. You know, just Switch create through. a store where everyone just trades. <laughs> yeah, it's just a big trade factory. That's awesome. I'm gonna invent that. We'll invent that but together. In my head, in a surgeon's office, there's a pile of tits. Just, just there. That's in my top surgeon's top surgeon's room, and each one has like a name, a and name. number on the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> autographed. Yeah. That's great. Wow. So you had a good top surgery experience. Though. I did. It was it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Wow, that's awesome. Now I want to talk about uh, two things. Um, First, I guess, since we're talking about top surgery, how was your dysphoria after top surgery? Like, my my chest was like the 
main cause of my dysphoria and it was like the most uncomfortable thing I'd ever experienced. And so afterwards, like there's still a video of me on my phone afterwards where I'm like, hey guys, just remember like if you're trans and people let you get top surgery, it's like cute you're not depressed anymore. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and I think it, it was it was it was so life changing because that was really so upsetting, especially being on testosterone and having tits was like mm -hmm. like when I was when I wasn't passing and I had a chest, I was like, OK, this makes sense. Like I'm still I still look kind of like a girl. Mm -hmm. But then when I was like passing by face mm -hmm. and the rest of my body didn't match, it was honestly like looking at a cartoon gremlin in my mind i was like this is so odd and yeah. looks so weird to me which is all of my internalized transphobia that was coming out of like mm -hmm. this is disgusting <laughs> but it was a lot of like self-hatred and then afterwards yeah. i was like oh my god dude yeah no i get that i remember before i get to got top surgery all of my shirts from back then are like they're all like because I spent all my time doing this. I would sit here in this chair yeah. and I'd be like this the entire time. They're all like worn out and like stretched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I there were I could only wear like five different shirts and like I as you can tell, I'm a fan of clothing. I do. Yeah, I see and that. White white shirts are my favorite. Like I love a white shirt. Me too. And when I was wearing a binder, I couldn't wear a white shirt because you could mm. see the binder mm -hmm. everywhere and I like have such bad sensory issues and I can't stand when a t-shirt fits like this and I had to get all my t-shirts like this so the straps <laughs> wouldn't show on yep. the side. So the worst. Struggling. The worst was when your shirt would do this and you'd it's see like, like a, the binder right here. Oh. Oh, you're like, oh, I'm in a bra. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Big, big boy bra. Dude, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Yeah. I hated that. Oh. It's just so – and – I didn't realize till after I got surgery how badly binding fucked up my body mm -hmm. because I was so dysphoric that obviously you're not supposed to wear a binder for more than like eight hours or something. Which we Probably all did. Pushing it. Oh, we all did, of course. <laughs> and like, oh my God, I don't think there was more than like 20 minutes where I wasn't wearing it. Besides mm -hmm. when I was asleep, I didn't sleep yep. in it, thank God. But my shoulders are so like my posture this is good posture this is where i am naturally. dude i'm slumped all the time i'm slumped 24 7 and now especially an after surgery mm -hmm. he, because of the contouring he did with my chest muscle this muscle like under my armpit is so tight and I have to stretch every single day and do like trigger point stretching because it got so tight. And yeah. See that, people? Don't bind for too long. It's not worth Don't it. Don't bind for day. too long. It'll hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember uh, I worked at a liquor store for like five years and I, I was constantly like moving boxes and like heavy boxes mm -hmm. and I would bind all day long doing like manual labor and it was terrible and it fucked me up for life because i have a bad wheeze now like my back yeah. and neck are always killing me like <laughs> it's not worth it it is yeah, not my worth back it. my back hurts 24 7 i have to roll my back out twice a day or else i'm like constantly in pain mm -hmm. which you don't really think about these things when everyone's like don't bind you're like okay yeah i don't want to like hurt my lungs <laughs> But the long-term effects on your muscles and your bones, mm -hmm. y'all, take it yep. seriously. Come on. Yeah. Because you're a kid. You're All you care about you're a child. is it's your passing. Your bones are squishy. Yeah. yeah. It's fucked up. Very yeah. fucked up. Um, did you use, what was it, GC2B binders? I did. GC2B was my shit. Yeah. I, uh, I tried Underworks, and I wore it for one day, and I had literal like gaping like blisters under my thing because of how harsh they were and oh. so like i still have like right here let's see i do binder donations still oh no way for some people <gasps> and so like i wow. i have the the artifacts here 
mm, to give people, to but, I also, yeah, but I only do GC2B really because yeah, GC2B was a good company. The gas. Yeah. I saw you have one of the, the long tank top ones. Yeah. I haven't thought about those in a while. Oh yeah. I never did that one, but <laughs> God, God, imagine like working out in one of those. That's Jesus. what I'm thinking. Walking around in the summer in Texas yeah. in one of those. That's the other thing. It's so freaking hot in Texas. Oh my God. In a binder mm-hmm. underneath a t-shirt. Brutal. Absolutely Deathwish. brutal. Deathwish. I started halfway through the liquor store before top surgery and stuff. I started using uh, KT tape. Okay. I used that for a little while, but then you start, you sweat it off too. It's, mm-hmm. it's got my, got band-aids on the nipples and shit. I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Fuck this. <laughs> Right. Give me top surgery. That shit hurts. <laughs> I tried to do KT tape, and then I learned right after that that I am allergic to adhesive. Hmm. Who knew? So I take it oh. off, and it's just like brutal red, like everywhere. Oh. Oh, the pain isn't <laughs> worth it. No, it's not. Honestly, I and I think I got to a point where I was just wearing huge fucking t-shirts before yeah, top surgery. Same. I was like, I'm yeah. over this shit. This mm-hmm. ain't fair. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about with you is, which I talk about a lot on here now, is um, dating as mm-hmm. a trans guy. You mentioned prior before that you have a girlfriend. I do. Do you think that? Um, Dating as a trans guy is harder than, you know, dating as a cis person. It depends how you identify, I feel like. Um, mm-hmm. For me personally, I hadn't had a large issue. Um, I literally only dated one person while well, trans, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have a big issue, though, like trying to find people that would be okay with dating a trans person just because I had heavily identified as a lesbian before and a lot of the people that i was interested in were sort of pansexual just like i don't really discriminate in my brain against who i like and so right that's kind of the people that i leaned more towards just because when i was in a super like hetero presenting relationship i was like well (laughs) if i get broken up with like i'm i'm screwed yeah Um, i get that and it was just a big barrier in my mind. And so, yeah, I think that there's, I think that trans guys have an easier time than trans women, obviously, but yeah, I feel I like uh, compared to, compared to like a gay man or like any other straight person, it's, it's a lot harder. There's a lot of more yeah. nuances and I feel like we're a lot more emotional than your typical man. And so things can be, Mm-hmm. pretty intense for us right which is kind of hard and you said that you've only had you've only been with the same person since you came mm-hmm. out as trans that's yeah. really cool that's awesome yeah. i've been with her for four years and i just celebrated four years on t and so i started dating Congrats. her like thank you i started dating her like three months before i came out and i think she was sort of the catalyst of like let's get this show on the road because that was in my mind that was what was holding me back the most of like if i come out and things change i really can't lose her because she's what's keeping me alive right now so like i was just holding myself back and then i finally talked to her about it and she was like honey honey just go do that (laughs) and i was like you sure (laughs) you sure about that you You gonna leave me (laughs) right you're not gonna leave me (laughs) No, but she's she's really supportive and like it's been so eye-opening dating her because she's one of the people that like she'll genuinely forget i'm transgender and then i'll say something and she's like what oh um yeah right (laughs) and i'm like honey (laughs) or she'll she'll be explaining something and she's like oh i forgot you're trans right (laughs) but it's not it's not like it's not like she's ignoring the fact she's just like she genuinely just sees me as like her boyfriend and she doesn't think of me as like her trans yeah. boyfriend. Which and is that's, so, that's all we want. So most of many. us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just want to be treated. We all just want to be treated as normal. I know. Normal. Yeah. 
Um, you just want to be normal, mommy. <laughs> that's cool, though, that, like, because I, I feel like for most trans guys, in the beginning at least, that's kind of what we all need or what we're looking mm-hmm. for and usually how it goes where the girlfriend at the time is well, like you said the catalyst like the reason the the push if you mm-hmm. will because even me i think i was it was a junior in high school dating a girl and um i I was just, I was just like, I want to cut my hair. I don't know mm-hmm. why, but I want to cut my hair. I want to look like Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, and- it, listen, just the work that Justin Bieber did for the trans community, <laughs> he is so unaware of. The I know. Amount, the amount of times I had put my hair over my head and was literally like, <laughs> I'm literal. Bro, Justin you look Bieber. like him. <laughs> right? That's awesome. He did more than he knows for us, dude. He worked for the trans community, for sure. He worked hard for us. <laughs> and he's so unaware. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, but like, I was like, I'm going to cut my hair like Justin Bieber, and that'll be that. And I'm still going to go by she, her pronouns. And yeah. And my girlfriend at the time kind of was like, Are you sure? Like, what's the real reason you want to cut your hair? <laughs> like, what are you hiding? And Let's I was like, to the root. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and she was like, do you want to be a boy? And I was like, whoa, oh, that's an good option. Question. Good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't even know that was an option for me. So like, I think she definitely kind of opened my eyes to what could be. That's nice. And ever since then, you know, Cause like I would, I'd follow like what you said in the beginning. I wanted to ask you, uh, mm-hmm. you said that you followed or watched a lot of YouTube videos about trans guys. And do you remember what trans guys you <laughs> do? I remember what trans guys, come on, man. <laughs> so it was storm Ryan. It was Calvin. It was, yeah, Calvin. um, it was unfortunately that chase guy with all the dicks on his wall. Yep. Um, Jamie from the UK, there was a lot of um, mm-hmm. who was that guy? The mirror of Sam Collins. Sam Collins. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> I Sam knew that's what you were thinking of. Sam Collins was like low key my blueprint because mm-hmm. I was like, he's so attractive. I know. Like him, him and him and Storm Ryan. I was like, y'all, I gotta get like that. <laughs> I gotta get like you. <laughs> I gotta get me some of those. <laughs> Yeah, it was Sam Collins and Hunter, HK Hunter, Hunter, I think he is. Yeah, Hunter. And yeah. um, the okay, the first trans guy I had seen on social media was Wesley Tucker. Yes, yes. So listen, I've when t- that's yes. the first trans guy you see, oh, it sets a high bar, high standard, high fucking of, standard. He is cut from a different cloth. That man is literally like molded out of marble. I and know. Don't he's think so he's beautiful. Out. I don't think he's ever said anything about being trans, which is also like so confusing, but good for him. Yeah. But like, that's how I wanted to be. I didn't want people like, I didn't want to be like trans, trans, trans. Yeah. But then I came out as trans and I was like, y'all are so (laughs) stupid. I have to be like trans, trans, trans. Yeah. Come on. I know. I talked about Wesley Tucker uh, for a, a little bit in one episode. Cause he was he was one of the first trans guys I ever saw, and I followed yeah. him way before I knew he was trans. Me too. Like I was like, yeah. this man's attractive. I'd I'm gonna follow him. On Tumblr, <laughs> on Tumblr, I followed yep. him, and I was like, oh, he's hot, because he was mm-hmm. like a Pinterest guy. And then yeah. I was like, what are those? What <laughs> yeah. are those? <laughs> And oh, then I, I yeah, there. and then I came out as trans, and I'm, and I, then I started looking at every guy's chest, and I oh, looked yeah. at his chest one day, and I was like. I was wait. like, wait a damn minute. <laughs> Hold on Hold now. Up. <laughs> Hold yeah, but up. He, he is not open about being trans Mm-mm. at all. I think no. he said it once maybe. Yeah. But like didn't Which even like, go into detail about it. Power to him. I yeah. Would, that's how I wanted to be originally. And then I was like, well, damn, I guess yeah. I got to speak out. Yeah. It's hard. It's because it's like you're not forced to tell the world that you're trans and you shouldn't have to be forced. You're allowed to be trans in however way you want. But like it is hard, a little hard to see somebody with that big of a platform completely hiding that part of himself. Because it's like you can help. To have people like commenting to like trans guys commenting and being like, 
Say something. Please. <laughs> Help me. Help us. But at the same time, you're you're so not required to do that as a trans yeah. person. And yeah. so um that's that's good for him. But yeah. It's his life. You can live sometimes it he wants, sometimes I'm sometimes I'm a little resentful just because yeah. I'm like, We're all doing this. Come on. <laughs> Join the party. <laughs> and plus the fact that he's so hot doesn't make it easy. I know. I it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help. I'm like, God, you are literally a Greek goddess. <laughs> and he can sing and play the guitar. I know, it's, it's like, like just, uh, just leave. Just, go. just get out. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, that actually falls into the next topic I wanted to talk about. Where we talked about it a little bit, uh, we've called it to pass or not to pass. Mm-hmm. And I talked about it a little bit with Tyler on uh, the last episode, in a sense. Um, but I think you and I were talking about how passing, it's not important to pass. You're still trans if you don't pass. It's not like important mm-hmm. to pass or whatever, but like being passing as your typical cis man and telling people that you're trans and being open about being trans can be argued that it's kind of important for cis people to see Mm -hmm. in order to show the world that we are normal fucking people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, um, at first was so, uh, I was so sad on passing, obviously, because that was what was causing me a lot of dysphoria was the social aspect of it. And so whenever I was like trying so hard to pass, it was the only thought that was consuming my mind all day was what are people thinking of me? What is everyone else thinking? Who's looking at me? It was so draining and I had to just stop focusing so much on that and just be myself and yeah it came with some misgendering at first but it was it was worth it to me because once I started seeing kind of how cis men were when I was a man how they interacted with me differently and how disgusting that was to me Mm -hmm. um that's kind of when I was like I don't want to pass anymore which is the largest privilege that I have Right. Just because of the way that I was born in a like white body with a rich family, like I'm allowed mm-hmm. to do this right. and still be safe. However, like there's people who don't have that option, which it's a privilege that I can even question whether or not I'd like to pass. Um, but that's my reality. And mm-hmm. so whenever I'm in situations where I'm with a lot of cis guys, I tend, if there's women around, I tend to only go towards the women and automatically be like, I'm trans. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I don't, I'm not them. Right. I'm not those people. Yeah. And like, at first I so wanted to be like, that was my goal. But then mm-hmm. I was like, there's, that's icky to me. Yeah. It's, uh, I said it before, but I think that was my biggest thing that I had to relearn as a trans person when I started hormones and started Mm -hmm. passing as cis because the entire time like you said all I wanted to be was cis all I wanted was the world to just see me as a normal cis guy that's all Mm -hmm. I wanted but now that is so far from what I want like I I don't want to be a typical cis guy Mm -hmm. yeah like typically because they suck which yeah. is all this podcast is about at this point. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, that was like the biggest thing that I had to relearn. And cause you realize that people start, cause we see both sides of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're able to, us being, being able to pass so well to, we're able to see how cis men act when women aren't around. Correct. And, how like it just differs when women are around and Mm -hmm. like i don't know i've been around some really shitty fucking people and i never ever ever want to be perceived like that you know Mm -hmm. what i mean no and in those spaces when 
I've never I've it made me so uncomfortable because I have I have a twin sister like I'm only I went to an all girls high school like girls are like women are the center of my life honestly mm -hmm. and that's I'd not agree. something I'm ever gonna be like ashamed about and that's not like a bad thing at all and mm -hmm. so when women are the center of my life and like kind of I in my mind live in a matriarchy and so when the men start acting out I'm like this is embarrassing like mm -hmm. who do you think you are and then there's also a dichotomy of like when I'm with them they give me so much more respect and like I'm a part of the conversation I'm a valued member of society and then when I when I do choose not to pass then that group of people automatically who saw me on the social ladder right here with them I'm automatically boink Mm -hmm. right back down to the bottom and so there's a dichotomy of me being like do i want to ride out this privilege while feeling so much internalized like anger or do i want to choose to stay at the bottom with mm -hmm. where a lot of cis people have put us and mm -hmm. um struggle wow. with that while still being able to like be myself and that's kind of where i've chosen to go mm -hmm. of like I don't, I can't with cis men anymore, <laughs> especially after this year of mm. all the, of just trans people being like the talk of the town and oh, hearing yeah. what people have to say. I'm like, this, y'all are disgusting. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be seen with y'all. And like, I feel like it's, I don't want to say a trend because it's deserving, but it is very in right now to hate cis men. Mm -hmm. because or hate white cis men that think you know they're all that and yeah. and in that sense i really don't want to so be perceived as a cis man you know what i mean that's something that i've been really struggling with lately and something that even my therapist brought up to me because i was talking about that kind of dichotomy and then i was like but i just hate men i can't and then she goes hey um by the way you remember you're a man <laughs> and I said, yeah. oh, you caught me. And she's mm -hmm. like, so if you hate men so much, do you feel like there's a little bit of internalized hatred towards yourself because of that? And I was like, oh, bitch. How dare Damn. you? Yeah, because I you? mean, like, am I a little, I don't know, maybe, uh, am I maybe a little upset that like – not that being trans is a choice. I didn't choose this. Mm -hmm. But am I just mad at the fact that I am coming off as cis? Like am I mad that I have to be this way? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to be this yeah. way. I don't want to come off as cis, you know. That's, that's a topic if I ever heard one because <laughs> mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time – shitting on cis men because it's deserved let's be real right. but it is it does come from a place of insecurity for sure for sure oh it's, oh, it's all me being like just completely feeling like worthless around them of just mm -hmm. like not measuring up or just never never getting the validation that i want from them and it's not even that i want validation from cis men it's just like i don't know yeah. Just respect, at least. Mm -hmm. It's all stemming from the way they've made me feel in the past, or the way I've made Correct. myself feel around them. You know, mm -hmm. man, I got to work through that. <laughs> That's it's a that is probably the hardest thing in my transition that I'm. It's probably the only thing in my transition that I'm currently putting energy into and like dealing with is that um, I've noticed so much after getting to a point after top surgery where I'm comfortable where my physical transition is. Mm -hmm. Now I'm realizing in the social spaces, I'm so uncomfortable, especially interacting with cis men when I'm not out to them. Mm -hmm. I'm just constantly in my head being like, you just outed yourself. They know you're a girl. You mm -hmm. idiot. Yep. I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. but, and there's yeah. nothing. Because like what I would say to that, if we were just, you know, shooting the shit, I would be like, Bro, that's the dysphoria talking. Like you did mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong because you probably didn't. You know oh, what no, I mean? They, they were probably enjoying my company. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, they're all stupid. Like they don't that's think that I'm, far. That's, that's what I have to remind myself. Yeah. Is like 
we as trans people know the cues and like the little things like I can spot. I always see this in in thrift stores is like I can spot if you're trans literally just by you standing next to me yep. looking at a shirt like I can tell you're a trans man. Mm-hmm. But then that in my mind makes me think that all cis people are also wired like that of like able to spot us out like that. Mm-hmm. They have no clue what's going on. I like, got asked none. if I had open heart surgery when someone <laughs> saw my my double incision and i was like no actually it was shark attack (laughs) they don't know what's going on no they don't that's kind of why social media makes me nervous a little bit of people being so open on social media Mm -hmm. and it reminds me of some quote that laverne cox said in um i don't know if you've seen the documentary disclosure of um trans representation in the media and how that shaped kind of our self-hatred um, you should really see it. It's a good documentary. But she oh, yeah. says, the more the more we are visible, the more we are seen, the more we're seen, the more people can violate us, which <sighs> is so oh. much of a double edged sword of like, oh, yeah, I want to be visible. But the more visible I am, the more they know and the more they know they can use it against me. And so when people are so open on social media, I'm like, this is amazing. And then at the same time. I see like a gym bro who has gynecomastia who got double incision and people are commenting, you're trans, you're trans, he's trans. And I'm like, how do y'all even, we've gone too far. (laughs) Y'all know too much, you know? Well, that's a point that I have not talked about yet on this podcast. That's crazy. I've actually seen, I've seen probably the same guy you're talking about on TikTok who Mm -hmm. had that. And you know, funny, my my surgeon, Dr. Elliot Jacobs, he, that's what he specialized in. And I can never remember that word. He just reminded me of it. How do you say it again? Gynecomastia. Thank you. Yeah. That's what he specialized in. And Mm -hmm. so I typically, I got keyhole. It's literally just keyhole surgery. That's it. You got keyhole? Yeah. Ooh. Cause that's what he specialized in and he didn't call it keyhole though. I don't Mm -hmm. know why, but I guess that's typically what it is. Um, but yeah, that's there's a kid on TikTok. I have no idea what his name is, but all of his comments are so transphobic, telling mm-hmm. him to die and shit because mm-hmm. they can see his scars. But he's cis. He's not even yeah. trans. That just goes to show how fucking stupid transphobic people are. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think he, and he's a, the one who I'm thinking of is a gay man. And he's constantly like, I think one of his top pin videos is like the controversy of people thinking I'm trans. And I'm like, <laughs> literally eat my shoe like this is yeah. just so so he's no. kind of using it to his advantage for clicks it yeah seems like. and also also just being like i'm not trans like that'd yeah. be such a bad thing to be ah so oh he's not even an ally <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's fucked up i feel yeah. like a lot of gay men are not allies to the trans community um uh what were we just talking about though you made a really good point um uh Oh, the more we're seen, the more we'll get violated. Damn. Like, damn. Yeah, and it it really kind of shaped – it's kind of put me where I am right now of, like, I had intentionally went to college to become, like, a diversity and inclusion um, manager, whatever, a diversity and inclusion director at high schools and stuff like that. That's Um, cool. But then I – ran the diversity equity and inclusion club at my college and it was the most draining thing i've ever done trying to convince people to care about trans people who don't care it was just so much work and so that's kind of imagine that's kind of put me where i am now of like do i want to make that my career of being seen all the time and getting violated constantly oh i get that they're violating me Yeah. yeah No, Which obviously I get it. you're there. You're there too of doing the podcast and yeah, know. it's I, I I'm like still on a very small level with it though. You yeah. know what I mean? Nothing compared to like fucking Sam Collins or mm-hmm. Dylan Mulvaney or any mm-hmm. of these people. And like I couldn't imagine that, but like I can already see that like making this something that I want to do with my life, where I constantly have to pick apart the trans community and pick apart all these transphobic people and, and expose myself to them. Yeah, put a lot of energy into it. Yeah, I spend a lot of my time having to look up transphobic things. Yeah, and like. 
exposed myself to that and then reading hate comments on youtube and tiktok and shit it's 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 draining i'm not somebody who cares about hate comments like i can easily walk away from it and be like haha you're stupid but Mm -hmm. like i get it like i get why dylan mulvaney needs to stop sharing her transition with the world because yeah and laverne that's that's what i i i commented this on one of dylan's posts of when she was talking to Laverne and there was a little bit of controversy between her and Laverne for a second, just because there was a moment um, at some award show where Dylan was like talking to Laverne and Laverne was like, there are some things that you should keep private. And, and Dylan responded in a way that kind of seemed like she thought that keeping some of that private was like for, for her sake personally and for her own Mm -hmm her own energy sake but it was kind of more of a generally for trans women in general of the more that you're putting out as a trans woman the more people are seeing about trans women the more they know about trans women the more they can use against trans women and so it's like yes we're putting all of this visibility out here and people can see us but also we're giving people a platform just to spew hatred into and Mm -hmm. also to learn about things that we haven't shared before and we've kind of kept on the hush hush for a reason Mm -hmm. like we could have people could have known about double incision for the past 50 years however we have not shared it kind of for a reason and so with social media coming out and this becoming so visible to everyone Mm -hmm. it's a great thing because it's helping so many people but now people know more about us and it ends up hurting us too yeah because now as you said cis people can especially with double incision and stuff can start picking people out of crowds where like, I mean, trans people have a radar though, where cis people don't like we talked about before, like you said, I think you said it to me first that, you know, you and I or any trans guy, typically most trans guys were standing in a crowd full of cis people. You would not be able to pick us out. You would not be able to tell. And that's what cis people typically don't know or don't understand Mm -hmm. because, First of all, trans men don't exist to society's no, eye. Who? What? Yeah, a trans man. <laughs> what Never is that? Heard of her. Is that like a lady crossdresser? <laughs> for fair. real, people people forget about uh, trans men for sure. But yeah, as you said, like obviously, I like you know educating people on transness, but I do find that sometimes I don't like it when cis men or cis women, cis people know things. Cause I'm like, this is only meant for me and my other fellow trans men to Mm -hmm. know, you know what I mean? And I think that falls into like the whole bottom surgery and what happens down there when he starts testosterone and like things like that. It makes me extremely dysphoric when cis men or even cis women, know that. Yeah. And I think it crosses a boundary when they'll go out of their way to, like, Google it or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's – and something that became really apparent when I transitioned was how interested people are in trans people. Um, What the fuck? <laughs> like – Oh my god. I I came out and I really thought at first that it was just because of my friends being supportive. And like you have your close friends who are really supportive, but there's the people that like you know loosely. And because Mm -hmm. I did it in college and I went to a college that had like thirteen hundred people, like it was high school on steroids basically. It was I was transitioning in front of everybody and everyone was watching and they were all talking. And I was like, hee hee. Woohoo. (laughs) And so I kind of had to convince myself, and this is what I do for transphobic people. I've had to convince myself and train myself to think, you are obsessed with me. I have not once thought about you in my life. And you're out here Googling things about me and asking questions about me. Like, Mm -hmm. get over it. Like, seriously, I have never thought about you. And... I thought it was genuine, like, intrigue. I thought it was interest in first of, like, wanting to educate yourself. And then the questions kept coming. And they got a little more intense and a little more invasive. 
and through time people started literally walking up to me in a bar being like so you have a little dick like come on i just <laughs> Not the dancing was <laughs> It's it's genuinely so odd. <laughs> oh, dude, no! Like, what? You have boundary issues, my mm-hmm. friend. Why do you think that is okay? Like, no, they're like, googling yeah, so they can. Yeah, like, yeah, and that's that's the thing. Like, that's the thing about being open and like having a podcast like this and telling people that you want to educate. It makes them think, okay, this person is willing to talk about anything it's like i never said i'm willing to talk about what's in my pants you fucking weirdo no genuinely (laughs) when i when i transitioned i made it very clear to everybody that like yes i was an open book you can ask me anything when i said anything (laughs) um, i think i should have clearly stated i didn't mean my genitals um thought that was an understanding here that we had as humans however um, we're gonna have to relearn this. Don't ask me about my wiener. Like, like that what? ass is like talking to fucking kindergarten. No, not even. I find, I no, feel like kindergartners genuinely. would know better. Like genuinely, it's like talking hell. to a baby. You're oh. like, it's talking to a baby, and you're like, no, you can't. You can't say that. <laughs> you no. can't ask about people's peepees. <laughs> you can't ask someone's wee. You can't say something about their wee wee. Like dead ass. Like we learned this at a young age, guys. What's what's going on? Come there's, on. There's a moment that I remember so clearly of some girl that like had been very interested in my transition, and there were a lot of girls that it was it was all girls that were really interested in my transition. I think it was because I was looking like transitioning so naturally and mm-hmm. looked like a typical like white frat guy that was attractive and not like right. not to suck my own dick but like i look kind of <laughs> suck okay your own dick, please right but <laughs> so they got all of the friends that i was like all the girls that i was friends with loosely got really intense with me and like too close to mm. the point where i'm like y'all like one you can't ask that to get your hands off me mm-hmm. just and it was a lot of like because you still see me as a girl that has become a boy you think i'm that safe and so you feel safe enough to cross my boundaries you feel safe you feel safe enough to like some people felt safe enough to literally like go and try to kiss me and i'm like god i have a girlfriend and you're gross Mm -hmm. yeah so like uh that's a good ass point that cis women sometimes feel like they have an advantage over cis men when interacting Mm -hmm. with trans guys yes we feel more comfortable around you but like that is not an excuse to ask the questions that are not allowed you know what i mean like Like, you can't you cannot ask me something like like the example that i was talking about as i got home from a bar and there was a girl there that i was friends with and she was very drunk and she was like talking about me being trans and it was super super innocent at first and then she's like so like do you still like have sex with your and i was like oh my god oh my god and i chewed her ass out so hard and i don't i I haven't spoken to her since i don't think she's ever tried to speak to me again but that was like so appalling and that's the point where i was like i gotta stop like i gotta dial it back a little bit because i can't be this open anymore yeah because sometimes cis men aren't typically smart enough to ask those questions (laughs) yeah they're not they're thinking about themselves they're not Mm -hmm. thinking about me that much Mm -hmm. is what i've also noticed and women are so like aware of their surroundings where men are so like women want to learn and know things yeah. and are curious women are curious for the wrong reasons sometimes mm-hmm. yeah 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 no and like just because you're a cis woman just because we lived half a life being whatever you are like it does not mean you have an invitation to ask me about what's in my pants you fucking weirdo mm-hmm. like no, especially and like, being a woman you should understand <sighs> you should know as a woman not mm-hmm. to turn things sexual because it's like mm-hmm. that's what we've been avoiding the whole time huh which I brings know. us into our last topic yep the barbie movie barbie <laughs> barbie <laughs> you saw the barbie movie last night right I did. My mom and I went to see the Barbie movie. It was very fun. What did you think about it? 
I am Alan. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Genuinely, I'm Alan, and I think trans guys are Alan. Yeah, and it was. I don't. Uh, it's not a trans movie, but it's so a trans movie. I know. Like, like I know. oh my god! And so, um, in in my mind, I live in Barbie Land. Like, mm-hmm. in my world, women run shit. Like, I I was raised by like the most independent and strong mother, and like my father is super like the same way. But she 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 mm-hmm. runs shit. Yeah, like my, my mom, mom too. Wears the pants, and yeah, so does my mom. So. <laughs> And so then going to an all girls school and having all of my like very smart professors being women and just having women being like so centered in my life. Mm -hmm. I live in Barbie land and in my mind, like women are that that's how it's supposed to be. And then when I'm in reality, I'm like in Mm -hmm. the not Barbie land reality. And because I've because I just know how Barbie land could be. Mm-hmm. It, it's more upsetting because I'm like it could y'all y'all don't know how good it could be if you just let women have some things mm-hmm. but imagine living in a world where like we weren't early cis women I mean I think trans men as well we all have to more women though way more women they have to eat sleep talk walk drink a certain way because mm-hmm. society is favored towards cis men. Yeah. And um, the whole movie itself, and I don't want to spoil too much for people who haven't seen it, but um, it's all about misogyny and toxic masculinization. Hello? Toxic masculinity. You got it. I got there. Don't worry. (laughs) Um, There is a bit of trans representation in that movie, which I really liked. What's her fucking name? I forgot to write it down. I forget her name too. Max, I need a fact check. (laughs) <laughs> there's a I think there's one or two trans women in the Barbie movie. Yeah, there's one that was she's a ginger. Yeah. And I've seen Harry her on Neff. social media. Hari Neff. Ha- what? Hari Neff. Hari Neff. Hari Neff. Trans actress from Philadelphia. Hmm. Was there yeah. another one? Or was it just her? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's her. Hari Neff. Wow. I didn't mm-hmm. know her actual name. Um, she's in, she, I think you just said you've seen her on TikTok and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Like, yeah. it sucks that I think that it's cool because it's, it should happen more often. But it, to me, I liked it, but it felt pick me. Like, it felt like, I get to that. me, it felt like a school textbook of like, we got the black girl, we got the ginger, we got someone yeah. in a wheelchair, and we got someone looking weird. So like have to include everyone this covered day covered all age. your bases. Yeah. But like that's well, that's also something that I'm just like No, yeah, I get that. It did feel a little forced. If that's what it it felt like yeah. a little ingenuine because mm-hmm. I'm like just put one trans girl in there, just the one. Yeah, it's, it's like, like why you did what you why can't to there do be more? Greta, uh, Greta, you make you a did good what point. You needed to do. But yeah. like and and like having one one fat girl. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Like, no, that's facts. That's that's something that I was a little surprised on in the movie, especially dating someone who is a big girl. Like, mm-hmm. I was really offended that everyone in that movie was skinny except for one girl. And, like, yeah. Yeah. when you're representing women and the majority of the women you're showing in this movie are white, skinny girls... Like, yes, I understand that's because that's what Barbie is. And, like, that's the point they're trying to get across is, like, that's all that's been shown. But, like, if you're in Barbie land, mm-hmm. like, that's fine in reality. In Barbie mm-hmm. land. Yeah, you have to the... run everything. What the fuck? You're going to say you there's had... one fat girl and one trans girl mm-hmm. in all of this community? Get you it had straight. the opportunity to, like, yeah. to create more in Barbie land because you made mm-hmm. it up. Like, yeah. yeah, no, that's a that's a solid point I didn't even think about. Wow. Because yeah, but... you're right. Even with the trans people, like, the one, there's more than yeah. just one. If, just in, one. How, yeah, how many Barbies were in Barbie world? And you're telling me that only one just happened to be trans? Right. That goes to show that people don't realize how many of, of how us How many there of are. us there are. That's that's another thing. I'm like, and whenever I came out and people were like, 
you're the first trans person, like you're the only trans person I know. And in my head, I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, like, I know so I'm many not. More, so many more people yeah. that you're not even aware of mm-hmm. are trans. So, yep. yeah. And the interesting part about the Barbie movie, I feel like, is spoiler, not spoiler. I don't know yet because um, I'm trying not to give too much away. But um, by the end, I feel like you end up feeling bad for Ken. Yeah. And they they make you feel bad for the men because they are end up being th- just as much victims to the world that they created and which ties into reality where like cis men – today can't even live up to the standards they've made for themselves you know what i mean which i found that really interesting but then i was mad that i was feeling bad for the men (laughs) exactly (laughs) yeah that especially when um not just there's that's probably not a spoiler but um there's like a point where barbie has to comfort ken and he's like having an emotional breakdown because he can't run the world and Mm -hmm. like i it reminded me of like every man ever just mm-hmm. like you did this to yourself. Mm-hmm. What are you yep. complaining? And now I'm having to come free. Okay. <laughs> that was like a point in the movie where I think it was supposed to be showing you like, this mm-hmm. is how men act and women have to baby yep, them. Yeah. And I kind of wish that that part was more apparent. Mm-hmm. Like maybe, I don't know. Like they, I feel like they could have shown more. That's what they were doing because mm-hmm. it, I feel like a lot of people lost that message of yeah. like, you shouldn't have to do this for men because it's their own fucking fault. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I the know. best, the best parts were just where Barbie's just like, I, I don't need Ken. I don't need a Ken. Like, yeah. what do you mean? And so I don't know. That's just, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a great movie. I think I lost some of the, like all I, of a sudden, I, they were just like going from Barbie Land to the real world many times, and I got a little mm-hmm. lost at some points. But other than that, I mean, and what we said before about there could have been more trans representation and everything. Like, other than that, I think it did send a good message about misogyny and stuff. Yeah, it was. It's it's a good point if you were able to understand it. Right. Or I'm like. If if you didn't really have a complete understanding of how much the patriarchy is like affecting us mm-hmm. and not really just like what how men are different than women in the mm-hmm. ways that they act, kind of just like structural level what right. patriarchy is. Mm-hmm. But um I wish at the end they had done a little bit more to connect back to um they like connect to a story of like somewhat of a mother and daughter and i wish they had tied more into that because it kind of like whenever they sing the billy eilish song and where they're like take my hand the thing you see on tiktok mm-hmm. i wish that that had gone on for a little longer because it mm-hmm. just felt like they just plopped it and then they were like the end and i'm yeah. like wait that was fun yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think they have a little collage at the end of um, a bunch of women and young girls and older women. And I learned, I think, on Britton Broski's uh, podcast that all those clips and stuff that you see at the end while Billy's song is playing are, which I think is kind of cool, the people that worked on the movie were told to find videos and pictures of important women in their life. Oh, really? And that's what those, those, that little collage is, which is, oh. which is pretty cool. I wish that had been stated. Been known, been, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I was kind of looking cool. at it like, who are these people? <laughs> yeah. I was like, who are these women? And what's their point? <laughs> what's their story? I want to know. Right. But, but I, I noticed, it. yeah, I noticed at the end that she kind of like, while Billy's song is playing, it's, uh, that song makes me sad, but that I love it. That song is so upsetting. She it's, should literally be arrested. I know. It's so Once, sad. The amount of times it's made me cry, she should be arrested. I know. And as soon as it therapy. started playing, yeah, because I knew the song, like I learned oh, the song, downloaded on Spotify, knew yep. all the words before I went to the movie. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm sitting next to my mom and she's like, I don't really get it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then like, I've like, like small world my coworker, 
walked in the same time I did. <laughs> like I'm sitting there in the movie, my coworker walks past, and I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> and so then she's sitting behind me, and I'm like trying, I'm crying, and I'm like, <laughs> fucking look at me. No, for real. As soon as that Billy song started playing, I as was soon like, as oh, the music boy. starts playing, I'm yep. like, oh my god. And there's she sang it at Lollapalooza, and just mm-hmm. hearing everyone singing it with her is like what have oh. you done? What have you done? <laughs> Dude, yeah. And like, I knew what the song was about before seeing the movie. Mm-hmm. But like, now that I've seen the actual storyline, listening to that song now, thinking from Barbie's perspective is actually kind of cool. I won't lie. Yeah. Um, but at yeah, the end, I... while that song is playing, you notice, I guess, that like, I don't know, she just, Barbie had just went to the real world and experienced how, like, men rule the world and shit, and how Barbie land is, she can be whatever she wants to be, mm-hmm. and, like, she can rule things or whatever. Yeah, and how, and, and how Barbie kind of hurt people yeah. a little bit, yeah. and set unrealistic expectations instead yep. of just, like, making people confident in things they could do. Mm-hmm. And she still chooses to go back to the real world at the end, which mm-hmm. I thought was cool. Cause it's like, it shows like, yes, this all sucks. We're all in pain and misogyny and toxic masculinity and all the things wrong with the world. What else? We don't have anything else to choose from though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like we, we would still choose life. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of cool, but yeah, I think the TikToks have moved me a little more than the movie genuinely just yeah. people like real people posting videos of themselves as children and their mothers i'm like oh oh it just hurts humanity god it's so good and so bad <laughs> mm. for real uh before we go i wanted to talk about your business a little bit Yay! you have a clothing store called bandana boy vintage I want to give you a moment to talk about that and what it's about. So Bandana Boy Vintage started because of my transition. I was so depressed before transitioning and I was using food as a coping mechanism. And so I gained a lot of weight. I think I was um, like 200 pounds and like I'm 140 now to give you a little context. And so I once I transitioned and started coming out the weight started falling off because i was happy crazy and so then none of my clothes fit me and i was like well damn and (laughs) clothes were like the one thing that really my whole life have been my gender like expression was Mm -hmm. through clothing and it's the one thing that kind of let dysphoria go away for a minute as a child so i've always been really interested in clothing but men's clothing in general Mm -hmm. and So once all those clothes didn't fit me anymore, um, they were mostly from thrift stores because I loved thrifting growing up. And so they were a bunch of vintage pieces and I threw them up on Depop at the time and was like, well, let's see. And a bunch of them sold and I was like, oh, okay. And so then I went back to the thrift store and picked out pieces that I thought were so cool, but that I wasn't going to keep for myself. And I was like, okay, let's see about this. Mm -hmm. And then people loved them. And I was like, maybe I have an eye for something. And people at my college would be, would see me with stuff that I thrifted and be like, Hey, can you thrift me something? Like, Hey, can you find me something like this? So it kind of turned into a little business there. And then I started just collecting pieces and it turned into something a little bigger of just, um, as a trans guy, it's kind of hard to find your style. And as even at, a lot of, it was more as a masculine lesbian was really hard to dress mm-hmm. um, because men's clothes aren't made for female bodies mm-hmm. and so most of the people that follow me are assigned female at birth either are trans men non-binary people or masculine presenting lesbians mm-hmm. and so i've just kind of created the space where people can experiment with their style and get pieces that aren't super expensive because you don't know how they're going to fit you or how they're going to work out and getting those right. pieces to where it's not as accessible to others and mm-hmm. kind of just creating a safe space in the vintage community. Cause a lot right. of vintage communities run by like guys that are obsessed with t-shirts and old stuff. And it can be a very like ooh, energy. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and like if you've ever been to the goodwill bins it's like mm-hmm. male jungle energy yep and so i just wanted to create a little space where people can come and express themselves in clothing hell and yeah it's dude. Been very fun to do hell yeah i think that's awesome because i think and, during my transition i didn't even realize how important clothes were mm-hmm. but like was the one thing i like grasped onto because it yeah. was the one thing i could control and it's like one of the largest things that helps you pass is like mm-hmm. when you're seeing someone and you see them dressed in male clothing your mind automatically is like boy and so right. that really helped me pass a lot of just like wearing stereotypically male clothing and Mm so um allowing others to be able to do that especially um and connecting trans people to other trans people Mm -hmm. is also something i do and i do like binder giveaways and some top surgery or just gender affirming um medical care uh donations and stuff like that and so just kind of trying to create a space for trans people to that is really time. cool that's dope i think also connecting trans people i've learned which i never knew is a really validating thing to do to bring people like you together is really validating so yeah hell yeah i think almost all of us like when we were going through our transition we probably only know like one or two other trans guys in real life and yeah or like even online and so like going through my transition especially in the beginning where i didn't know i i I had one guy that i knew had transitioned and he was kind of like a pompous ass and so i didn't want to ask him any questions because i was like i don't want you to have to like feel like a teacher because i don't want you to feel like that but yeah and then i found a couple of trans guys online that i'm friends with now and being able to talk to them about trans stuff is like Oh my God. Cause you can talk to your friends all day. You could talk to your partner all day, your parents all day about your transition. They're never going to fucking get it. Like it is not, they can empathize. They can empathize super well. However, the validation that you want is kind Mm -hmm. of like that. You're not the only one dealing with this. Mm -hmm. So cause it's all people. Yeah. It's all about feeling alone and sometimes seeking validation or empathy or anything from a cis person it makes it worse hit. yeah it even hit. if even if yeah. they're fucking doing all they can to help you it's like ah i'm sorry but it's yeah. not the same not the same yeah so i think it's really cool that you're doing something for trans people Thank i think you. that's dope everyone go check out bears clothing store bandana boy vintage i think it's super cool um i'll definitely uh, throw Instagram it up and a website Hell yeah, I'll definitely throw it up on the screen. I'll have Max do it. Um, and yeah, dude, thank you so much for coming on today. This is really cool. I this think we got some really real nice good conversation time. today. Yeah, I think we hit a lot of good things. That's kind of what I what I was super excited about coming on here is like, as I as we said like five seconds ago, transitioning can be so lonely. And to be able to hear people talk, like like just hearing friends go back and forth talking about your transition is so comforting. Like me just watching your, like just watching any episode from HRT, I'll just have it in the background and be like, Oh my God, thank the Lord. (laughs) The rest of us are here. That's really nice of you, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching too. Um, Starting HRT. That was my main goal was just Mm -hmm. somebody, just one kid, one trans kid out there could, could, learn something or feel less alone that's all i wanted from it yeah if i had had this podcast while i was going through the beginning of my transition i would have felt a lot less alone and like a lot more at ease just knowing Mm -hmm. where i can end up and how attainable that actually is yeah so i appreciate that because like me too like i i knew nothing i was Mm -hmm. i was so lost in my transition there was nobody doing this you know what i mean right and your parents don't really know what it is and so you're kind of running the ship and you're like you kind of run your own transition, which is terrifying. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It's scary. But thank you so much for coming on today. This Thanks was for having me. This is one of my favorite uh, convos yet during a really? podcast. So yeah, it was very in depth. Really well. I, I very much enjoyed it. Um, Bear, what is your Instagram handle? My Instagram handle, you can find me at 
Barrett underscore Grindinger or yeah. Bandana Boy Vintage. Just go to Bandana Boy Vintage because it'll have my other handle in the bio as well. It's easier nice. to find. And they will be on the screen so people can find you. And his business and his handles will also be in the lower description where you can find it. And you can follow me at HRT. I love how that rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> follow me at HRT. HRT Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. I post every day. And I post videos on here, on Spotify, on Apple Music. And plus, if you are on Spotify or Apple Music, come on over to YouTube because you'll be able to see us and it's just more fun that way. Um, but yeah, I post every Tuesday, Testosterone Tuesdays. Uh, make sure you follow me on or subscribe to me on Patreon as well. Uh, I put out videos every week on there. Um, I get more in-depth and talk uh, more about the spicy things on there if you're interested. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll do some episodes with bear as well yeah, on Patreon if you want to see more of bear. Uh, yeah, I'm sure bear will be back on this podcast cause this was really fun. And okay. other than that, thank you so much for being on bear. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye.